Welcome to another lifeboard video that goes through the lymphatic drainage associated with the female reproductive tract. So I have previously created a lifeboard video that goes through, in general, the lymphatic drainage associated with the pelvis. So this just adds on to that lifeboard series, just going through specifically the lymph drainage of the female reproductive viscera. So as mentioned, the learning objectives associated with this lightboard video are to be able to identify and explain the lymphatic drainage associated with the female pelvic viscera, and specifically knowing the afferent and efferent drainage all the way from the superficial inguinal nodes all the way up to the cisterna chile and then eventually the thoracic duct. So let's get the ball rolling and think about the lymph nodes that are going to be most distal in location and recall that your lymph node groups are going to be located around or encompassing the major vessels. So if we're starting from distal and working our way proximal, let's start off with the inguinal canal and the femoral artery. So the major lymph node groups that we're going to find in these areas are going to be the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, which are going to be just below the inguinal ligament or canal. And then located adjacent to the femoral artery, we have a small cluster of lymph nodes that are going to be the deep inguinal nodes. So the afferent drainage to the deep inguinal lymph nodes is going to be the collecting vessels from the clitoris. The superficial inguinal lymph nodes, on the other hand, are going to receive lymph from a variety of structures. So most importantly, lymph from the fundus of the uterus, so this includes the isthmus, so the attachment to the uterine tubes, is going to drain to the superficial inguinal nodes. The superficial skin of the perineum will drain to these nodes, and we also see that the vagina, just inferior to the hymen, is going to drain to the superficial lymph nodes too. In addition, our urinary structures such as the anal canal inferior to the pectinate line as well as the adjacent perianal skin will also drain to the superficial inguinal node group. So from here, the lymph from the superficial inguinal nodes will drain predominantly to the external iliac lymph nodes that are going to be adjacent to the vessels. We will also find that some of the lymph from the superficial group may also drain to the deep inguinal lymph nodes before then coursing up to the external iliac node group. So the external iliac nodes will receive their afferent drainage from both superficial and deep inguinal lymph node groups. They will also receive lymphatic drainage directly from the anterosuperior pelvic structures, and this is going to include the fundus or the superior aspect of the bladder, the superior pelvic ureter, it's also going to receive lymph from the superior vagina, the cervix, as well as the lower body of the uterus. In contrast, if we then consider lymphatic drainage to the internal iliac lymph nodes that are going to be located around the internal iliac vessels, this will then receive lymph drainage from some of the opposite urinary structures. So for example, we find that the base of the bladder is then going to send its lymph to the internal iliac nodes. We also find that the inferior pelvic ureters, as well as the anal canal superior to that pectinate line, as well as the upper and middle parts of the vagina, we have the cervix, and then lastly, we have the inferior aspect of the body of the uterus, then also draining to the internal iliac nodes. So in other words, the regions of the uterus and the vagina that are not draining into the external iliac nodes will drain into the internal iliac nodes. From here, we find that both external and internal lymph nodes are going to drain to the lymphatic nodes that are going to be around the common iliac vessels. So this is going to be our common iliac lymph node group.
So in this context, it's actually quite important to consider the anatomical relations of the pelvic viscera with the respective blood vessels to then estimate where they're going to drain into. Finally, at around this region, we have a small lymph node group that's going to be located close to the medial sacral artery that is going to be at that level of the bifurcation of the common iliac arteries. This is then going to be our sacral lymph node group. And the sacral lymph nodes are going to drain lymph from the posterior inferior urinary structures. This will also include the inferior rectum. And then considering our female viscera, lymph from the inferior vagina, the cervix, and the inferior uterus can also drain to the sacral lymph nodes. And then finally, from here, the efferent drainage, so going away from the common iliac lymph nodes, is going to be to the paraaortic lymph nodes. So the paraaortic lymph node group is part of the lumbar trunk, and these are going to be located just lateral to the abdominal aorta. The paraaortic lymph node group, also called the lateral lymph nodes, are going to drain directly into the cisterna chile that is located at that L1, L2 vertebral level. So the actual paraaortic lymph nodes are roughly at the level of L2, L3, and these will receive drainage as mentioned from the common iliac nodes, but there's also a unique set of structures that will drain directly into the paraaortic nodes. Specifically, if we're looking at the gonads, these lymph nodes are located or course with the ovarian artery in females. This means that lymph from the ovary, from the lateral two-thirds of the uterine tube, including that ampulla, is going to then drain directly into the paraaortic nodes. And then lymph from the fundus of the uterus can also drain directly to the paraaortic nodes. As always, you know that I like to use mnemonics. So a mnemonic that I like to use to remember specifically the lymphatic drainage of the uterus goes as follows. USA me lies is the abbreviation to then remember the upper, middle and lower drainage of the uterus. If we're considering the upper aspects of the uterus, this is then going to be drained firstly by S being the superficial inguinal nodes and A representing an important lymph node group associated with the aorta that is going to be the paraaortic nodes. The middle or the body of the uterus is then drained by the external iliac nodes. And then the lower uterus, including the cervix, is going to be drained by three potential lymph nodes. So firstly, lymph can drain to the internal iliac nodes, the external iliac nodes, or the sacral nodes. So as I've mentioned, if you want more in-depth information on lymphatic drainage of the urinary system, please refer to the other Lightboard video. But this Lightboard video, I hope, gives you a simple overview of the lymphatic drainage of the female reproductive tract, especially with relation to the uterus, the arteries, and the uterine tubes, and their specific drainage patterns either based on their regional anatomy and location or their specialized drainage with respect to the structures that drain into the paraaortic nodes. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that this Lightboard video has been useful to help you to understand complex concepts in a simple, easy manner.